Hello my wee corners, this is Lauren and we're back for a little quickie review of something that I really really love and I, I know you'll know that I love this. So recently it was made in a TV show for Amazon Prime, it's called The Boys. Okay, so let's download this for just now. So the difference between The Boys comic books and the TV show, it's not very much apart from they changed uh, Wee Huey to being an American um, and he's just kind of called Huey because he's not wee, he's like six foot odd and it's a joke they make during the um, TV show. Also Wee Huey's likeness is Simon Pegg who you also see cameo in the TV show as Huey's dad because Simon Pegg couldn't play Wee Huey because he's about 50 years old and it's kind of hard to play a teenager or a young person in their 20s when you look your age. So how many volumes are these? There's 12 but you can see that like I don't have all 12. I have 1 to 5 and then 12. Why? Because when I started reading these uh, my friend gave me a loan of them and I would fire through them all and then I would buy my own copies and then by the time I got round to number 11 I'd finished it and then 12 came out um, then 12 came out and I bought it and my friend didn't have it so I read it first and then gave it to him um, and I've slowly been collecting them all. Now when I knew this was getting made into a TV show I was through the roof because it's one of those comics that will make you see things that you haven't seen before or you haven't been made aware of and you will not be able to unsee certain corporate things that are manufactured in a certain way. Basically this is an anti-superhero team um, and they're all bound together by incidents because of superheroes or by superheroes and they're in a world where superheroes are corp part of corporations, they're put out to be one thing when they're actually another. It's very much in the vein of like, it's a, sh it's an, it's a, basically a shot taking shots um, at Marvel, DC, Disney, things like that. Shots fired! Um, so, if I can... It's, it's so in your face and it, it really does thwack you into seeing the realities of what is a superhero and are they good, are they legitimate, the destruction they cause, the the consequences of being involved with a superhero. Like it's like Lois Lane could never smash with Superman without Superman doing some serious damage. Like how does he enjoy that? Like is that a thing? And what Garth Ennis, the writer of this, who's a Scottish comic book writer, um, and I'm an advocate for most of those, um, really takes this to the next level. So this is volume one. This is the cover. You can see the um, remade for the TV show itself, which I love. Um, and a lot of the titles for each episode actually reflect back on the um, the the volume name. So one of the the episodes was called Get Some and that is this one. You'll like, like the covers are amazing. I love and the further you get into the story, the more into it, the more hyped up, the more blood you'll see in the covers. So this is a uh, Frenchman, you've got Billy Butcher, you've got the female, you've got uh, Mother Smilk, you've got Huey here. And Huey steadily gets darker and darker. Like he's got the shades on, he's looking kind of mean. He's kind of imitating Billy a little bit. Um, and then we've got number five, which is uh, Good for the Soul, which is another title you'll find used for the TV show. I mean, I love these fucking books, man. Um, like, Homelander is the biggest asshole ever. He's like a cross between. Um, Superman and Captain America and maybe one or two other people but you'll notice that yourself they're meant to be a piss take they're meant to subvert and to show you the horribleness I mean if you were getting um, a bit uh, worn out with all the superhero stuff running the, the comic book gauntlet of like Marvel and DC 
this is here for you, right? And it won't even just show you what it's like for um, just comic book stuff. It shows you marketing. It shows you how people present themselves in public to get money and revenue to sell merchandise, to do... There's lists and lines they do, and even if you watch some Comic-Con panels, you can see it. Um, and it'll make you... You'll make your stomach turn just a little bit. But these comic books are here for now, just in case when you're getting tired of superhero stuff. This is for you. If you don't like all that stuff, this is for you. Definitely. <clears throat> so, um, this is volume four. This one's got... Uh, we Gotta Go Now. Um, this one is about the lower ranking tiers um, of the comic book world within, or the superhero world within the rankings. As I'm sure you've noticed in the TV show, if you've watched it, um, there's different ranks and you move up the ranks and you, and they amuse themselves all differently. And this is where you get to see a lot of the more shenanigans, sexualized stuff that, that goes along with the superheroes and um, the underground stuff that you don't get to hear about um really really in depth and you get like the piss take of more and more comic book characters and groups upon groups upon groups um within that universe and then this one's called hero gasm this is number five look at these covers man just look they're beautiful. They, they do, the aesthetic is really on point with a TV show. Like, I just, that, watching the scene with Homelander and Maeve at the plane was cool, but also equally disgusting. And I think they've done Homelander a lot of justice with it, with the costume. Um, but how they work in the the plane the, the everything just mental but you can see homelander's missing a few things in the comic book and the tv show but i think his 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 outfit turned out really well considering how he's been represented in other places so um you've got mave you've got um starlight and a bunch of other people here so you can see a lot of the, co the the costumes they made for the show are pretty accurate to um, how they've uh, placed them as well. Um, and, I mean, you can read through these and see, oh, that's, that's, that's Aquaman mixed with, with so-and-so and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then, as, as I said, I don't have the other ones, but I have uh, number 12. And number 12 is uh, the, the Bloody Doors Off. So if you don't know what this is a reference to, this is a reference to Lock, Sock and Two Smoking Barrels. You were only meant to blow the bloody doors off, not the whole thing up. So, And this is a really good... Um, I love the actor who does Billy Butcher in the TV show. He does them so well. Um, he, he, counts, he skeets that line between good person and bad person and really dodgy person, the good, the bad and the ugly. And, and this is what this is. Um, the revelations towards the end. I'm, and bear in mind, I still haven't watched episode 7 yet, which will be happening at some point. I've just been busy with other things. But I just want to say to, say to you, you should really read these, especially number 1, because it has a little um, prologue from um, Simon Pegg himself, uh, an introduction by Simon Pegg, um, and how his likeness was made in the Green Huey. He's obviously a massive comic book fan, and I would like advocate that you watch, like you read this, whether you like him as an actor or not, or as a person. That should matter not. It's um so so good. Um, I mean, I will warn you, these are a bit more disgusting <laughs> than the TV show was, and it's not for children. No one under eighteen should be reading these. No one. When your child turns 18, then you give them to it to them as a birthday present and to ground them in reality um, instead of like superheroes who may or may not be a bit questionable. And I think it also comes down to philosophy. This is a very philosophy. It's very what many people would equate with a kind of 1984 vibe. Um, uh, but you've got kind of like this anti-hero anti super team. I mean, just... 
the female is vicious as fuck. Um, Frenchmen's amazing. Their relationship, they understand each other really well. Um, and these two bounce off each other. Um, Mother's Milk, when you find out why he's called Mother's Milk as well, it's in, 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 in the comics. I'm not sure if it's in the TV show. I need to go watch it. But uh, they're also very like strong and complex characters against all these superheroes. And love, love. These are in like my top favourite all-time comic books I've ever read. Graphic novels. They just, they're just out of this world, out of the park. And I mean, one day I hope I'll get Garth Ennis to, to sign these for me. And I'll complete my collection. Um, like I, I don't usually like getting signed copies, but this would be one of them that I'd... I'd if you're going to be woken up into reality, these are the comic books to be reading. So anyway, my wee corners, I hope you've enjoyed this little rant about the boys um, and about the nitty gritty, everything and the, just the sheer in your faceness of the boys. Um, and you hope you take on its lesson further into your life because the philosophically, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good teaching method. Um, but anyway, my wee corners are going to get back to my studies, prepping for uni as I'm back at uni in about a month's time. With lots of Jane Austen to read, so watch out for some reviews on those. And also remember, hit subscribe. Um, I am trying to get myself up to 1k. If you can help me do that, great. If you can notify somebody else, listen, you should check this channel out, do that. Hit the green notification bell for when I go live, for when I have upload new videos. If you love this video, leave a comment. If you've got any suggestions on what next graphic novels as you read that are similar or you want to know where you can get them, uh, put the comment down below and I will reply as soon as I can. And until next time, thanks for watching and I will catch you in my next video. Tadles!